Welcome, you're watching Tech 24 and France 24. I'm Marjorie Payon. Coming up. Football is in the air. At the World Cup unfolds in Russia, we'll dive into the innovation that are turning the field into a tech arena. Game's on. And in Test 24, cryptocurrencies can seem a little fuzzy sometimes, so the challenge is to make them more tangible. Now, the World Cup will be on screens until July the 25th, but if you can't make it to Russia, game developers might have a solution for you. An immersive experience where you get to be on the field, one of the many sports innovations presented at last CES Asia in Shanghai. Robert Seton Maddox has a story. Experience a football match as if you were one of the players. Take a bird's eye view overlooking the pitch, or even relive decisive moments close up in slow motion. The tools of tomorrow for football fans. And you could really sense the uh, game. And you could feel the depth when you're sitting at the top and seeing the match being played. Augmented reality is also entering the world of football. From now on, you'll be able to show replays or access the profile and stats of each player. When there is an item that could be activated, you look into the item, just hold your, your sight for one second, two seconds, and then it will execute. So your eyes are like, like the mouse, and the click is just uh, keeping your eyes still for one second. Another novelty, a 360-degree video system developed by Intel in partnership with the Spanish Football League. The American company has installed 38 5K cameras in three stadiums in Spain, Camp Nou in Barcelona, Santiago Bernabeu in Madrid, and Ramos Sanchez Pizjuan in Seville. Precisely calibrated, the system captures everything that happens down on the pitch. It will be fully interactive, so you, can, you will be able, during the match, uh, on your mobile phone or tablet to select the view, to, to see how you want to see that goal, uh, or you, you want to see that play from different angles. So it, it's, uh, it's evolving over time. There are plans afoot to take the technology further, expanding to the stadiums of San Mamés in Bilbao and the Mestella in Valencia. And we have our own player on this set, our own striker, if I may, Dana J. Kalikar. Hi there. Hello, Marjorie. So, Dan, let's start with the World Cup uh, ball, which we actually have here on set. What tech features does it boast? Well, this is the first time that uh, NFC technology is being used in an official match ball. Unfortunately, the NFC technology won't provide you any information related to your performance. Uh -huh but you could use it to unlock exclusive content about the company and some other relevant information. Now, the other interesting part is that this ball is made of six panels, and these panels are glued seamlessly to each other. Now, that apparently helps uh, for uh, the be a better flight of the ball, uh -huh. rather better control when it's in flight. Uh, then it also has a pixelated uh, uh, I don't know, design, uh -huh. if you can see here. So this apparently is because it represents the digitalization. Oh, it's and, techy, right? Absolutely. And secondly, uh, it's, the ball is called Telstar 18, uh -huh. which is a tribute to the original Telstar ball, which was used in the 1970 World Cup in Mexico. And it had that iconic uh, black and white, those black and white panels. Now, they were made specifically to, um, for the audience mm -hmm. of the black and white televisions in that era. So this apparently, the pixelation also is, uh, it apparently appears when the when that 1970 balls is in motion so it's a way of paying tribute uh, to that ball okay let's go back to what in uh, in color actually and the tech innovation that we are witnessing in this 2018 world cup the biggest of them all is the video assistant referee right that's right marjorie the 2018 world cup will be the first time that var will be used now the var technology involves using video to assist uh, the on-field referee it essentially consists of uh, three people who sit in a room uh, with 15 monitors, and uh -huh. these 15 monitors display 33 different camera angles. So this team will uh, assist the referee in very important uh, situations. So for example, in order to avoid errors and in incidents, 
that could have a big impact on the outcome of the match, like for example, whether it awarding or not awarding a penalty, uh -huh. uh, whether uh, to uh, issue or not issue a red card, and also to ensure that no wrong player gets sanctioned. So in these three situations, the referee could ask uh, for a replay and he could either uh, uh, follow the verbal information that he gets uh, or he can, if he's not uh, satisfied, mm -hmm. he can himself look at the video replays uh, on the side of the field on a monitor and then decide uh, whether to change his decision or not. And what about the goal line technology that debuted four years ago? Is it still out there? Absolutely. Uh, if you remember four years ago, it, uh, debuted and there were three incidents that actually uh, you know used this mm -hmm. uh, particular feature now the goal line technology I can see as you can see here on the screen that was the first goal uh, in the match between France and Honduras that the goal line technology was used exactly. so it consists of 14 high-speed cameras that are uh, present in all the stadiums and they track the track the ball and within one second the referee gets an alert whether it's a goal or not so and that is, the ball has passed the line or not. Still at full. So, unsurprisingly this time, data crashing makes its entry in the form of electronic performance and tracking systems. How does it work? Well, the technical staff of every team at the World Cup will have dedicated workstations uh, in the stadium, and they will have a dedicated communication link with the coaching staff. Now, they will be ad aided by two optical cameras that will be tracking the players and the ball, and the ball, and the information generated uh, to this technical staff can be shared in real time with the coaching staff. Mm -hmm. And the coaching staff may use this data to make uh, some important decisions during the match. So let's stay on this data science angle. Uh, they play, of course, a major part on the field. And there is even a brand new job title for it, Sport Scientist. So how far can data change the game? And will AI be tomorrow's referee? To deep dive into it, I'll be joined now by Omar el Hush. He's a researcher at Polytechnic in Paris. Hi, Omar. Hi, Marjorie. So you've teamed up with the sport data startup, Opta, um, to design a simulator which can predict the outcome of the game. So how are big data and AI balanced in this project? How does it work? Yes, actually, we, uh, uh, with a group of uh, students from the Ecole Polytechnique, we worked on this project supervised by uh, Professor uh, Mathieu Rosenbaum. Uh, and th the main goal of this uh, project is to have this uh, simulator uh, in order to predict the results of uh, a football game. How does it work exactly? Well, uh, what, we what we predict exactly is the uh, next move of a player uh, in, um, uh, in a certain position of the field when he's possessing the ball, is he going to make a pass, to shoot, etc. And also we, uh, we, we compute the probability of uh, success of uh, the next move of the, this player uh, by using some techniques of machine learning on the dot data that was provided by Opta. So do you guys want to be a Dalek's version of Paul the Octopus? Well, uh, Kind of, but there is still a big difference between uh, what we did and uh, Paul uh, the octopus because what we did was kind of a scientific approach uh, in which we use uh, uh, the data to answer the question of who's going to be the winning team. And Paul the octopus was kind of using, uh, choosing actually the winning team in a random way. So what can be actually the impact on the teams themselves and on the fans? Well, uh, for sure, there will be a big impact of this uh, uh, simulator on the on the teams because thanks to this simulator, we are able to answer many questions uh, for the coach. For example, uh, we can uh, answer the following question: uh, What is the optimal strategy uh, to apply against a given team? Uh, what sh uh, what should be the uh, starting players, and uh, what should be also the optimal? Uh, disposition of these players in the field. Uh, we are also able to answer uh, the question of the optimal uh, substitution, uh, which means actually at a certain moment of the game, uh, do we need to, to make a substitution? And if, we, if yes, what is the optimal substitution? And we are also able to give also the, 20, the, the optimal list of the 23 French players who should play in the World Cup to uh, maximize the chances of France to win the World Cup. So we are kind of uh, trying to, to make the game more efficient 
and so more spectacular so that uh, the fans enjoy more the, the game. And probably one of the disruption uh, might be uh, disrupting actually the betting industry, but we'll say that for later. Thank you so much, Omar. And now moving on to Test 24. Cryptocurrencies can be a little fuzzy sometimes, so the challenge is definitely to make them more tangible and secure. Done! Do you think we can make this happen today? I think I've already done it in the form of this device called Nano S by the French company Ledger. Now, the, uh, Ledger claims that this is a great way of uh, storing your cryptocurrencies in a very secure way. So the idea is that instead of having your cryptocurrencies on an exchange which could be susceptible uh, to hacking, you transfer all your digital money on this device. Now, this device, in order to open this device, first mm -hmm. of all, there's an eight-digit pin. Once you enter it, and while you're configuring the device, you have to enter a 24-word phrase. So it's in case you actually lose the device itself. Absolutely. If you lose this device, you can buy another device or you can access other platforms. And then you have to enter these, these words uh, in order to get access to it. As you can see here in the background, there are in overall 2,048 words. Now oh, that's yeah. generated by a protocol called BIP39. So out of those 2048, 24 are randomly generated by the device and you enter them and you write them and you keep, keep this very safely. <laughs> Don't in the forget your 25 bucks. Don't lose that, yeah. So that is the idea. So there's this double security uh -huh. and even in terms of hardware, it has two chips. One chip is called secure network for keeping your data safe. And other is the MCU, which enables the communication between these two chips. And more importantly, you can have multiple wallets stored on this device. Dan, thank you so much for this solution. That's it for Tech24, all we have time for, but stay tuned on Friends24, and we'll definitely see you next week on set.